Hello, uh, we're a group that's going to be presenting the centrifugal pumps in parallel for Check Lab 4011. I'm Esther Arma. My name is Anisha Ali. My name is Sherry Ali. My name is Ajika Lekumler. So today, um, a little overview of what we're going to, what we're going to do is um, the background, which is our abstract, and a little bit about the theory, how we selected this process. Um, our procedures and our results and discussion and practice including. In the centrifugal pump lab experiment, there are two primary objectives. The first was to obtain the characteristic curves of output head versus flow rate of the water with the pump rotational speed. And the other is just to dis determine the minimum value of the net positive suction air that would prevent cavitation. And we know that cavitation could be defined as bubbles forming in the liquid. The bubbles are developed in areas of relatively low pressure around an impeller. All of this experiment was just to show the characteristics and operations of a centrifugal pump and also to differentiate the flow rate and pressure head of a single pump and pumps that are running in parallel. One way to describe a pump is to think of a tool that convert, converts mechanical energy into fluid energy by increasing the energy possessed by the fluid. And since a single pump may be insufficient to produce the performance needed to, um, we combine two pumps, making them parallel. And that increases the pumping capacity of the system. So two pumps can be connected in parallel so that half of the flow passes through one pump and the other half passes through the second pump. And when the two pumps are in parallel, the total head increase remains unchanged, meaning that the flow rate is increased. Um, the head capacity is curve, the head capacity curve is found by adding the capacities of the single pump curves at the same head. And we obtain some of these characteristics and curve by using the MPSH formula, which is what we have here on our slide. The procedure for running centrifugal pumps in parallel to ensure the identical performance makes sure both pumps are at the same setting. The second step would, to, would be to circulate water to flush the air from the system. Um, next, we want to choose two valves of RPM for running the pumps. One should be the highest obtainable. At the flow rate of zero, select the go icon so we can report the data and it will be on the results sheet. On the next Step, you want to open the gate valve just by small increments so we can get different flow rates for the pump speed. Um, for the next step, you want to continue to open the gate by a little bit at a time and record each time. After taking the final set for the first RPM, you want to take the data again for the second RPM speed and each time opening the gate a little and recording the data each time. And then once you're done with the set the pump to one to zero percent and then shut off the system. Once we collected the data from our experiment, we plotted it onto a graph with the characteristic curves uh, for three different RPMs, one being 1800, the other being 1620 and 1440. Once we collected that for the parallel pumps, we graphed it onto this graph. And as you can see, as the flow rate increases, the total head combined is decreasing. And please note the flow rate for this parallel pump is at 1.2 liters per second. And now comparing to a single flow rate pump, um, as you can see that the flow rate is less than half of what it was previously, which actually proves our theory that using parallel pumps, you can increase the flow rate of the fluid but also it doesn't affect the pressure head combined. And afterwards, uh, we collected that data and used it to collect, uh, calculate our NPSH. And this is an example calculation of how we calculated an NPSH for trial number one, for pump one. 
So from the results, it can be assumed that higher flow and pressure drop is directly related to the level of the flow control valve. As the flow control valve is open to allow the fluid to pass, the flow rate is increased dropping pressure. At higher pump RPMs, the outlet pressure is higher, whereas the inlet head pressure remains relatively close. The relationship between the former is why the output heads are higher for higher pump RPMs and is expected to do so. The effective two pump performance curve is obtained by adding the flow rates of each of the pump at the same head. When two pumps are connected in parallel, it not only provides increased flow rate, but you have relatively a smaller, higher chance of higher increase of head, pump head. Uh, pump efficiency sees a steady increase. <clears throat> So to result and conclusion, the objective of this experiment was indeed REACH, which was to obtain the performance characteristics for variable speed for parallel pumps operating at three different impeller speeds. Based on the graph that Shariar talked about, it can be seen that the graphs are intermediately declining, and then based on the three speeds performances, the difference of parameter was calculated to achieve the objective. Also, the experiment brought forth knowledge of how flow rate changes with a single pump versus a parallel pump. Furthermore, the new knowledge that we obtain on the performance characteristics is very useful for the entire group as future chemical engineers to select the appropriate pump for several operations, which depends mainly on the brake horsepower, the efficiency, and also the pump head, how the pump head varies with the capacity of the flow rate. These are our three references that we use to write the report and do our presentation. We would like to thank you for your time for watching this video. Thank you.